Tom's hardware has been playing Cyberpunk 2077 and has done some benchmarks on a few select GPUs, but it's just 7 GPUs, so I'm sure there are people out there wondering whether it works on their system or not, so I've taken their numbers and tried to extrapolate the performance for other GPUs. Now if this video helped you out, make sure to hit the like button and also to subscribe for more gaming analysis videos like this. <laughs> So the first thing I want to mention is that Tom's Hardware's article basically confirms that the system requirements are for 30 to 40 frames per second, which was what I anticipated and said in my video from a couple of weeks ago. So make sure to check out that video if you haven't already done so. Now onto today's analysis and what we're going to do is we'll run through some quick info about Tom's Hardware's article on Cyberpunk 2077 benchmarks, then I'll explain how I extrapolated the numbers for the other GPUs, and then I'll show the results. If you want to skip the explanation, use the chapters function. I'm not going to cover any of Tom's Hardware's analysis, so I definitely recommend checking that article and all the charts out for yourself. Firstly, Tom's Hardware's benchmark uses a i9-9900K, 32 gigs of RAM, an SX8200 SSD, and also tests 7 GPUs. It also does one CPU test where it disabled half the cores to mimic a 7700K, which makes it a 4-core 8-thread CPU. I'm not covering CPUs in this video except to say that a 4-core 8-thread CPU definitely bottlenecks the game performance as you can see here in this 1080p medium settings chart. That said, it's still above 80 frames per second so you can still play it pretty well. Tom's hardware also only uses 7 GPUs. We already know the game will run fine on the 30 series GPUs, so I'm not going to cover them in my video. But I think people who will be most concerned will be people who are on the NVIDIA 16 series, 10 series, 9 series and AMD GPUs. So my analysis and charts will cover these GPUs. For the 20 series GPUs, I have not provided as much coverage, but you may be able to get clues from Tom's charts and my info here. There is already a 3060 Ti which will be very close to a 2080 Super. A 5700 XT is included in my analysis. And a 2070 Super will be about 10% better, but nevertheless your 20 series GPU is just going to run it fine and you will be able to turn on DLSS for more performance. The other reason is my analysis is mostly for cards with less memory bandwidth than the 2060, which I'll explain in the next section. Finally, I'm not covering laptop GPUs today, it would make the research and video longer and I need to get this video out. So let's take a look at the 1080p medium settings chart first, and I noticed something curious. The RTX 2060 renders at 78.2 frames per second, but the 1060 is 37.4 frames per second. If we look at tech power up, the 1060 relative performance is 63% of the 2060, so if it was to perform to the car's shader performance, we should be getting 49.2 frames per second. So there is something holding it back. Now I do have to point out my analysis is based on speculation and it could be a number of things such as driver issues or the newer cards having features the older cards did not have or even different architectures of the cards. But one thing we do know is that the memory bandwidth of the 2060 and the 1060 is very different. The 2060 has a bandwidth of 336 gigabytes per second and the 1060 is 192 gigabytes per second. So my analysis today is based on the fact that the memory bandwidth could be where we are seeing further losses beyond just the shading performance of the CUDA cores. One thing to note is that some cars like the GTX 1070 have more VRAM than the 2060 but lower bandwidth and this could potentially help. It's not factored into my results but it's something that could boost performance. So to explain the rest of this table there's a 0.24 or 24% difference between the actual frames per second and the expected frames per second. There's also a 0.43 or 43% difference between the memory bandwidth. So effectively what this is saying is for 43% of the difference in the bandwidth, there's a 24% difference between the actual and expected frame rates. This gives a bandwidth penalty ratio of 0.56. If you multiply 0.43 by 0.56, you get 0.24. So we want to use this ratio with the difference in bandwidth for all the other cards. And that difference is going to give us the memory bandwidth difference we have to subtract from the expected frames per second to get to the actual frames per second. 
So as an example, for the GTX 1660 Ti, this card is 85% of a 2060. So the expected frames per second would be 66.47 frames per second if the memory bandwidth were equal, but it's not. It's only 288 gigabytes per second. So we need to account for the memory bandwidth difference. That's 0.14 or 14% multiplied by the bandwidth penalty ratio and we get 0.08 for the expected difference. So our actual frames per second is 0.92 times 66.47 which equals 61.15 frames per second. Now I'll put up the rest of the 16 series table here and you can see that the 1660 Super is actually ahead because the memory bandwidth is higher. So we'll see what the benchmarks are like once the game is out and if my analysis is correct. The 1660 Super is actually a cut down version of the 1660 Ti but only a couple of percent lower in performance. The 1650 is going to struggle and I don't know if the actual frames per second will be that low but it has a very low memory bandwidth and I'd recommend playing around with the set to reduce VRAM usage. Here are the rest of the results for the 10 series and the 9 series. I have the 1080 Ti in red because it has a higher memory bandwidth than the 2060 and I don't know if 336 gigabytes per second of the 2060 is a bottleneck for these settings. Maybe 448 gigabytes per second performs the same as 336 gigabytes per second at 1080p medium, in which case there would be no frame rate gain. I've highlighted it in red and I think you should expect performance closer to the expected frames per second column. Similarly with the AMD GPUs, the memory bandwidth here is much higher for some of these cards, so expect something closer to the expected frames per second. Here is the information in bar chart form and I'll leave it here for about 5 seconds and you can hit the pause button. For the 1440p medium settings, if all settings are equal, we can just get an average performance difference between 1080p and 1440p, and this worked out to be roughly 0.6. We can just apply 0.6 to our frame rate numbers to get our 1440p frame rate numbers. For 1080p ultra settings, we go through the same analysis again, but use the 1080p ultra frames per second numbers for the 2060 and 1060. For ultra settings, we should see a larger frame rate drop or more memory bandwidth required, and as you can see the penalty ratio is a bit higher at 0.63. I won't go through the numbers, but ultra will give a 30-35% to 35 performance hit. As Digital Foundry said, this is a very GPU intensive game. Don't forget, these are the average frame rates, so if you go back to the TOMS hardware charts, the 99th percentile frame rates are a lot lower and could definitely hinder gameplay. For 1440p ultra settings, I use the same 0.6 performance difference to extrapolate average frame rates, and as you can see, for most of these cars, this resolution and setting probably isn't going to be great. Anyways, hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about how this all works, please leave a comment below and I'll try and answer if I can. Remember, if you like this video, hit the like button and remember to subscribe for more gaming videos like this.